Hello and welcome. This is lecture of uh, ACCP 6 Advanced Taxation and this lecture is of uh, uh, Finance Act 2016. Now I don't know you might be watching this lecture in June or you might be lecture watching this lecture in September uh, but this lecture is relevant up until a March 2018 exam so if you're watching this lecture for March 2018 exam then uh, this lecture is fine this lecture you can watch this lecture. Now, you might be giving the P6 exam for the first time, you might be retaking it. Uh, in case of you, in case you're retaking and your last retake was March 2017, uh, then you might already know that syllabus has changed a lot, uh, especially if we talk about uh, income tax. There has been major changes in income tax and uh, in other syllabus areas as well. Now, although you're re re uh, retaking it, retaking the exam, uh, but you do, should not assume that you are retaking because you have to uh, unlearn what you have already learned and relearn what you will learn in this lecture because otherwise you will uh, confuse yourself. I will try to uh, emphasize the points where the major changes has occurred during the course of our, uh, during the course of our lectures. Say, so for example, if there has been changes in dividends, I will tell you that there is a change in dividends. Otherwise, you might think, you know, we used to do it in other way. Why are we use, uh, Why are we are doing it in this way now? So I will try to uh, emphasize it uh, in, in our lectures. All right. Now this is advanced taxation. Uh, if it is your first attempt, you have your past paper. Your last paper of ad, uh, taxation was F6, which was at fundamentals level. Now you might think that uh, uh, the syllabus is same. Although most of the syllabus is same, I would say 70% of the syllabus is same, that is a good side of this. The bad side of it is that uh, the exam technique is absolutely different. So the way you use to attempt F6 is not the same way you can pass P6. So in F6 level, you used to do the calculations and you used to, I mean, most of the bits and pieces were about the calculations examiner used to ask you uh, to give you the trading profit and he used to ask he used to give you lots and lots of stuff which you need to add back and deduct add back and deduct so after long calculation you can easily make 15 to 20 marks in one question it is not like that in p6 because it is absolutely different key to pass p6 is to emphasize on the theory not only on the theory but the way you communicate the information I hope that you would appreciate the fact that after passing this exam, you will be qualified chartered accountant, you will be qualified ACCA. So I hope that examiner expects you, I hope that you know it, examiner expects you uh, to be not only competent in the knowledge, but also to be competent in the way you communicate the information. Is it effective or not? The way you are writing the report, is it effective, is it useful if you uh, are writing in your workplace, if you are writing it in, a, in your own form? So that's why communication skills are vital uh, in a P6 exam. I will tell you the topics which we will study during the course of our lectures and I will also uh, talk about a little bit uh, ACC P6 exam. All right. Now if, we t if you are watching this lecture for the first time and if you are watching the lecture on accountancy tube for the first time, then I will tell you that the lectures are absolutely free and the course notes which you can download, they are also uh, free. Although the lecture notes and the you know, lectures are free, but uh, uh, you will have to buy the practice and revision kit, which you can buy from any approved learning providers. There are quite many in the market. You can buy, I don't know, from any of them. Uh, but I would recommend that you buy it from BPP. The reason being, uh, you can buy from anyone, but the reason I'm asking you to buy the BPP because I use myself, I use BPP exam kit, so that's why I'm asking you to use it, because I will not only giving you the lecture, the good thing is I will also be attempting some past exam papers during my lectures. So I will ask you to open the question number, say for example, 7 of the PPP exam kit. The, uh, so you should have the BPP exam kit in front of you so that when I ask you to open the question, you can easily open the questions. Although I will share the questions on my screen as well with you, but uh, please make sure you have the exam kit in front of you. So the things which you have in the front of you, you will have, uh, you will have lecture notes, uh, exam kit, and the lectures, uh, of course. 
So with the help of these three, uh, I will try to make the lectures and make the P6 as easy as possible. You will see during the course of the lectures, uh, it's not as difficult as you think. I will try to make it more easier uh, so that you can easily pass it. Now the jump up from F6 to P6, as I said, the syllabus is almost the same, but the technique is different. Some of you might be exempt from earlier exam, which was F6. In that case either, you should not worry at all because I will take you from the scratch. I will assume that you, should, you do not know anything at all about taxation. So in that case as well, I will take you from the scratch, from zero level. I will tell you each and every bit of taxation, UK taxation and blah, blah, blah. All right? So you should not worry any, uh, about it at all. As far as our website is concerned, all the lectures are available on our website and our lectures are available on YouTube channel as well. Please uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can like our Facebook page as well to get some updates. But the reason I'm asking you to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel is that whenever new video is uploaded, you will be the first one to know uh, The YouTube give you the notification that new video has been uploaded by Account Institute. So you will be the first one to know that new video, uh, video is all Video, video is available on the website or on the YouTube channel. Uh, I will not, uh, I mean, we will not be only giving you the lectures, but the exam tips will also be available. So that is the reason you should uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel because whenever the new video is available, even if it is exam, uh, even if it is lecture or exam tips, so you, so you will be able to uh, get the notifications. Although you should subscribe to YouTube channel, but I would ask you not to watch the lectures on the YouTube. The reason is that the lectures on the YouTube are not in sequence, uh, the proper sequence by which you should watch the lectures. Say for example, if you're watching this first lecture on the YouTube, that's fine, but the next video might be the lecture number seven. You never know. Excuse me, that's why you should watch the lectures on our own website, which is <coughs> excuse me, accountinstitute.com. Uh, because all the lectures are uh, given in the sequence uh, by which you should watch the lectures, lecture number one, two, and three. Uh, uh, we've also uh, divided the website into different sections of basics. So for your own ease, so income tax has a separate section, capital gains tax has a separate section, and so on and so on. So all the sections are divided into separate sections, so you can easily watch the lectures there. All right. So let's move and uh, start the uh, syllabus area of ACC PF6 uh, advanced taxation. The first section which we will study is called income tax. Now you might have already seen income tax at, uh, uh, at F6 level. So income tax is exactly the same. If you don't know about income tax, income tax simply means the way its name says, income tax is a tax which you pay on your income. Income could be on in many ways. You work for someone or you won't work for your own self. So whichever way you choose to, so if you are self-employed or in, or an employed, and then you will have to pay income tax on that. All right. The, our next section uh, is capital gains tax. Or we call it, sometimes we call it CGT as well. I will write it down as capital gains tax. So that is our second section. In capital gains tax, capital gains tax is simply a tax which you pay when you sell an asset and you make some gain, make some profit on it, you will have to pay uh, some, uh, you will have to pay tax on that. Now, capital gains tax, remember, is not a tax which you pay on your business. Now, the assets which you sell, you might be selling them assets in the business as well, but that is different tax. Capital gains tax is a tax which you, uh, which you pay when you sell an asset which you own, which you used, and then you sell it, then you will have to pay a tax which is called capital gains tax. But we will see later in details what it is. All right. Our third section is called corporation tax. A corporation tax, as its name says, it is a tax which companies pay. Corporation tax. Now this is the tax which companies pay. So if you are doing a business and you were doing quite well and you, then you thought, why shouldn't I register it as a company? If you register it as a company, then your company will have to pay some tax and that tax is called corporation tax because corporation means simply a company. So companies will have to pay tax and that tax is called corporation tax. All right. Uh, the next bit is called uh, inheritance tax. Now inheritance, as its name says, inheritance tax. 
Inheritance tax is a tax when someone dies and uh, whoever is the you know, whoever is inheriting the assets of the deceased person will have to pay the tax on it. Say, for example, if Mr. A has lots of estate, he was rich guy and he died, then the second owner, the, the next owner was their kids. So they inherited the land, they inherited the assets. Though so they will have to pay a tax on that and that is called inheritance tax. Our last bit is called, our last topic is called a value added tax or VAT. A VAT is a tax which pay you, you pay on some assets. We'll talk about these assets later when we move to that specific topic. But uh, I can say you might have to pay tax uh, when you put some fuel in your car or when you have accountancy practice and uh, you provide some services and you might charge some value added tax. You could be exempt in some cases, but we will see later when we move to that specific topic. Now, these are five major topics of uh, advanced taxation. Uh, some of the topics which I haven't listed there, there are some minor topics, say for example some trusts or a national insurance contribution. I haven't listed them, listed them here. Now these are major topics, income tax, capital gains tax, corporation inheritance tax and value tax. Apart from this, there are a couple of more chapters. Uh, they are just small uh, you know, chapters, but these are main topics. Uh, income tax has got about 10 chapter, chapters in it. Capital gains tax has got about 4 or 5 chapters. Likewise, uh, corporation tax has got about 6 chapters, I think. Inheritance tax has got about 3 chapters and 3 chapters of four value tax as well. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, this is all, all of our syllabus. We will see each in turn, and our first topic will be income tax. And uh, uh, there are, as I said, there are lots of chapters in each, uh, each syllabus area. These are not uh, just chapters, these are syllabus areas. Now you will find uh, each section on our website. So when you go to our P6 section area, P6 paper area, you will find income tax section and capital gain section and so on. So when you click on that, then you will find lectures on that specific, uh, specific topic. So just for your own ease, so you should know uh, how far have you covered so far. All right. Now we will take quite long to complete income tax. The reason is that it is uh, the most of the bits which you will see in income tax will be same in corporation tax, and, and the most of the topics are interrelated. One reason is that we will be just starting up. So in the start, I will try to be uh, more detailed so that you just uh, you know take the uh, you know, take the pace so that you can understand how each and everything works. So in the start I will be a little bit slow but we will uh, try to speed up uh, uh, in after some time. So we'll spend most of our time on doing income tax. It is a huge area and uh, most of the stuff which we'll study will also help us in corporation tax, will also help, help us in other uh, syllabus areas as well. All right? So that is our syllabus. If we talk about the exam itself, now that is a, a P6 exam. Now you know that all ACC exam has got uh, 100 marks in them, uh, but in this exam, uh, obviously this exam has got 100 marks as well. But how this exam is, has, uh, is divided, there are two sections. One is called compulsory section. So first section, section is called compulsory section. So you will have to do these questions, uh, whatever happens. So there's got... There are two uh, questions in this section. The first question is worth uh, 35 marks, and the second question is worth uh, 25 marks. If we combine them, they are about 60%. So there are 60% in our compulsory section. This is our section one. Now you will have to do it, whatever happens, because there is no choice in this one. The second section is a choice question, optional question, and this is uh, options quest options uh, section. You can see or uh, section number two. So they've got three questions in them, three questions, uh, but you have to, to choose only two of them, and they are 20 marks each, so uh, altogether 40%. And if we talk about these two, uh, are altogether 100 marks. So in section two, you will have three questions, but you have to choose only two of them. Now you've got choice here at uh, this exam and some of the other professional exams as well. Some of you might be thinking, this is good, but I say it is not good, it is bad. Now, this is debatable if it is good or not, but the reason I say it is bad because it wastes your time. 
you cannot do selective study anyway, you cannot question spot anyway, so you will have to cover the whole syllabus. But when you cover the whole syllabus, you have strength in each and every syllabus area. You might have, you might be strong in one area, less strong in another area, but you have to study all the syllabus anyway. So question is, uh, option is bad because you will keep wasting your time studying the, uh, sorry, reading the question paper. So you will have to read three questions, that is bad. You will have to decide which two you are going to attempt, that is bad because making the decision is very, very difficult at that time, pre uh, time pressured uh, condition. And most of the students spend a lot of time deciding which questions to do. So I would recommend do not spend much time. Uh, if you have covered each and every syllabus area, then you should not worry at all. Just don't look at question five anyway. So just do first four questions and that's it. However, if you are not, uh, you know, competent on, if you're weak on one syllabus area and strong on other, then just have a look at the, <laughs> excuse me, have a look at all five questions, but uh, try to do, try to make the decision quickly so that do not waste much time deciding which questions are you going to do and which question are you going to leave. So because you're wasting time, then it is, you, you are going to face trouble in uh, the compulsory section area. Now, which section, which question area, you sh uh, which question you do first, it's up, totally up to you. Some tutors say question one should be done first and some questions say, and uh, some tutors say these questions should be done first. I would not recommend all the questions, whichever you feel confident, you do that. But do not waste uh, time thinking on which questions you are going to do. So easiest way to do is to qu do question one first instead of going to options section and then deciding. All right. Now that was our uh, exam and that is uh, our syllabus as well. We will see our first section which is income tax in our next lecture. So like our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel as well and keep visiting uh, our website. And uh, so, you know, the reason you subscribe to YouTube channel is that you will be updated accordingly whenever the new video is available. All right. So I wish you good luck for your exam whenever you are appearing, even if it is March 2018 or June 2017. So I wish you good luck and uh, I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you and goodbye.